everybody welcome back to my channel thank you for clicking on this video if you are someone who enjoys talking about film how about click that subscribe button so today we're gonna be talking about episode six of the boys called the bloody doors off <laughs> Episode 6 brought it and we actually have two episodes left after this so we're coming to the end of the boys season 2 Well, let's go ahead and start off with Homelander and Stormfront. They stopped this Robert. Well, they stopped Miss Robert. He was just like a, a mugger like just a low-life little mugger. Stormfront and him are like chit-chatting it up and It's like, well, what should we do? Like, you know, we're like superheroes, but like you know, all they're gonna really do is just gonna keep him in for 24 hours. And then, you know, he's gonna be released and he's gonna go back to his, you know, same little things. Stormfront becomes very persuasive when she starts caressing a little Homelander just a little bit. Homelander is kind of like has his hand on the mugger. He kind of climaxes. The man's head explodes. But you know what? Let's go ahead and go with the deep real quick because I'm always forgetting about him. I always leave him to the end. From last episode, I don't think I actually mentioned it but Queen Maeve actually asked the Deep for some help. Find out what it was in this episode and that was he asked him to go and retrieve or try to retrieve the black box from the plane that crashed from season one. So of course the Deep you know being like this version of Aquaman has it in with the fishes can go and like swim in there. Queen Maeve is all like I need some sort of leverage towards Homelander. They really could not retrieve the black box but they were able to retrieve like a little camera uh, phone GoPro? It was some, you guys. And uh, we'll get to that when we get to Queen Maeve. But go ahead and move on to A Train. Now, the Deep is trying to recruit A Train to join the Church of the Collective, the, the cult that there's involved here. Um, I'm still very curious to know what the cult's bigger purpose is for the seven or for you know the deep and you know now trying to get uh a train back into the seven because you know obviously there is a reason but you know we may not know this season we may not find out till maybe the last episode i don't know but it's so funny when deep offered a train that cold beverage um fresca right i think that's what it's called the fresca drink so let's go ahead and move on to the boys and actually we finally finally get a uh, good use out of frenchie because frenchie throughout the season has really been just kept on the background really not being used and he's such a great character but you can see that this episode was more of frenchie's uh, episode honestly so we did get a little bit more of his background how he was recruited so we do get flashbacks of Frenchie um, going back eight years and we do uh, bounce back five years which is when we find out when Mother's Milk got engaged there's a cute little backstory there and that's actually when we got introduced to Lamplighter or in that episode because we already knew of him from season one apparently he was working with the boys even though he was in the seven but you know apparently they had something on him the funny thing is that Lamplighter is actually played by Sean Ashmore who in X-Men played Iceman and here on the boys he plays Lamplighter so he kind of jumped over from ice to fire but we do end up finding out in this episode that Lamplighter did not intentionally mean to kill the kids um he was honestly trying to kill Grace so it was an accident I mean there's no like excuse for him to have killed the kids I mean it was an accident but still so we're gonna just jump real quick over to Starlight Starlight has left the seven her and Butcher are you know just kind of bickering kind of like sibling rivalries kind of deal they're not liking each other so obviously you know they're just kind of like rah, 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 rah. um and, and it's so funny because they, they fight it out but then like at the towards the end of the episode or like mid episode when something does happen to Huey they kind of are like more civil to each other and it's like you know what Huey he doesn't deserve either one of us oh I don't remember the name of the hospital I'm so sorry you guys let me know down below the name of the hospital because I totally forgot about it but um it's not just psychiatrical hospital which is what the front is they're actually housing other soups Frenchie, Kamiko, and Mother's Milk end up sneaking into this hospital because you know they know that Stormfront has something to do with it. That's actually where they find out that Lamplighter's obviously still alive because they do see him there. In the midst of them trying to get out the, the game and Lamplighter kind of cross paths and of course Frenchie is like he can't have this. Lamplighter's trying to like get his little lighter and um, he actually ends up missing uh, Frenchie and ends up blowing up this door and it was a wrong fucking door to, <laughs> to blow up because this is where we meet 
Cindy, which is almost like a older version looking of Eleven from Stranger Things. I'm not exactly sure, sure what her power is, like if she's telekinetic, but I'm going with it's more of a Magneto power because I don't read the comic book, so I don't know exactly what Cindy's power really is. And they never really say verbally what it is. One of the guards does come and shoot her. She turns up and just kind of like blows them up like that was awesome. Obviously scared the shit out of Frenchie, Kimiko, and Mother's Milk. And obviously uh, the lamplighter wasn't having it. Was like, look, I'm your friend. Remember, I'm your friend. Because, you know, he was scared shitless out of this girl. So they're trying to kind of like escape and kind of also trying to work with lamplighter. And there's actually this really funny part <laughs> with Mother's Milk. I mean, knocking on the door and starts choking the shit out of Mother's Milk. Kimiko actually ends up knocking him out or killing him, whatever. And... <laughs> Um, the thing that's actually choking mother's milk, you know, starts, you know, just kind of slithering away, you know, it looks like it could be like a, a worm or like a snake or a long ass penis. <laughs> that is right. This man could extend his penis to like choke somebody and like smack some people around. It's okay. Let's go ahead and move on to Starlight, Butcher, and Huey. So we're on the field waiting for uh, the game to come out of the psychiatric ward. They were kind of there for the lookout. The patients kind of like stumbled around them and of course was very threatened. He was a very like shy guy. Some sort of like electro power that he just kind of, you know, when, I don't know. Either way it goes, the truck that Huey was in kind of flipped over. But he did get really, really hurt and he was like really bleeding out. So they kind of had to like get over to the hospital. They try to like carjack this guy. Stormfront ends up, not Stormfront, <laughs> uh, Starlight actually ends up killing the guy. It was kind of like an accident, but the guy did also pull out a gun. But you know, he was trying to get carjacked, but he died. Poor little thing. They just kind of left him in the middle of the road and off they go to the hospital. That's kind of where the whole bickering of you don't deserve Huey happens. We're going to jump over to Queen Maeve and Elena actually, which is Queen Maeve's girlfriend, ends up finding the GoPro camera or the camera, whatever the hell it was, of uh, one of the victims from the plane crash. And, you know, it shows that Queen Maeve and Homelander were on the plane, left the plane, and, you know, let them off to die. So they really don't go too much into that. I really know, don't know what's going to happen. I'm sure we'll find out in Episode 7. Uh, but to close this off, we're going to jump back over to Homelander and Stormfront. Homelander starts kind of doubting Stormfront uh, just because she's being very shady. She's taking off to go to that psychiatric hospital, but she tells Homelander that she has meetings. And of course, you know, you don't really don't want to fuck with Homelander because he's very, very psychotic and very like, mm. he actually ends up burning down his trailer where he had some flowers for Stormfront. But of course, where he was there waiting and like with his thoughts, his very psychotic thoughts, decided that it was best to <laughs> burn his trailer down. But this is where we find out a little bit more of Stormfront and we actually find out that she is the very first successful V patient. She was born in 1919 and she's actually the wife of Vault, uh, which is, you know, of course the company they work for. And finally we end the episode with lovely Cindy hitchhiking her way to freedom. So I'm wondering what's to come of her. Very exciting episode, you guys. I think it's probably my favorite favorite episode of the season so far hopefully of course like I said at the beginning just keeps getting better and better so this is all I have to say about episode six the bloody doors off if you've seen this episode what did you guys think about it let me know down below of course before you guys click out of this video don't forget to give it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I post something new till next time I'll see you guys next session bye